Ernie, let's go. Ernie, 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 Ernie,
is derived from Sukim, that the din of Tam Ki'ikr is deraisa. And the Gronis commentary on the Shulchan states that that's the accepted Allah. The Kaimalon Tam Ki'ikr deraisa, Kemosh Kosm, Uper Gimel, the Psochim, Uper Vav, the Nozer, Litain Tam, Val Kach, Drosha Gemuri. Now, it's not so partial. There's a Machlokas Harishonim, Rashi, and other Rishonim hold the Tam Ki'ikr is not the rice, so it's only rabbinic. And the nafkamina would be if it's a soft thing, whether something fell into something or not. If you hold it's tam kikers deraisa, then you have to be machmir lechumra because sofik deraisa is lechumra. But if you hold that it's only drabonon, sofik drabonon lekum. If we have time at the end of this thing, at the end of our session, we'll go into page one thirty nine. The the details of this machlokas between Rashi and the issue of whether it's rabbinic or rice or not. Now, according to this principle, but let's let's accept that the post scheme hold that tam ki'ikr is deraisa, like the gross said. According to this principle, even a small element of flavor absorbed in something, whether it's in a pot or a dish, is still halachically significant, even if the original food has been removed. We're going to learn, maybe, I don't know whether they're going to have it here or not have it here, but if you, even if you have shishim, if a piece of chazir falls into a dish, you have to, even though there's shishim there, you have to make an attempt to remove it. You can't leave it there. That's so, so, so but even if the, if the isr has been removed and, the, and it's only one in 30, it's less than 60, then this dish has the flavor of chazir, and the whole dish is also mito raisa, even though the mamashus piece of isser has been removed. So, if the flavor comes from a non kosher food, like a piece of chaz, like we said, or from meat that was mixed with dairy, let's say a small piece of meat fell into a pot of macaroni and cheese, same thing, even though you remove the piece of meat, the flavor of the meat is there. If there isn't shishim, this would be usr because the tam is there and tam is kikr. We're going to learn, what do you mean shishim? Chachamim figured out that if you have shishim, there's no tam. So, so if there's no tam because it's been nullified with shishim, then you can eat the dish. As long as the ikr has been removed, if the piece of meat is there and you, you, and you remove it, and there's more than shishim, you'd be able to eat the dip. Everybody understand so far? Yep. Mario, make sure to unmute, that whoever wants to unmute, to ask a question or whatever, you know. They can, uh, they can by themselves. Them. They can what? unmute by themselves. They can unmute themselves. Okay, so please, these are gonna be very complicated uh, uh, issues. And we're going to build them one by one. This is the heart of the Sirva Hetter. So any question, you know, please stop me and ask me the question. I have a silly question. Let's assume that meat did fall inside the dish. Who's the person that's to taste it to make a determination whether or not you're allowed to uh, great, eat it? Great question. So there is a, there is a simon in Shulchan Aruch called Kfeila. Kfeila means a non-kosher chef. I thought so, it's the rabbi of the Kehila tasted. No. There's a sugi of kfeila. There's a machlokas between the, the Maron Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah, so between Sfardim and Ashkenazim, whether you can ask, whether, whether you rely on a kfeila. According to Shulchan Aruch, you can rely on a kfeila if he doesn't taste it, even if it was one in 30, technically. But the kfeila doesn't taste it. According to Shulchan Aruch, you'd be allowed to eat it. According to the Ramah, we hold, you always need shishi. And we don't rely on a kfeila. So it's machlokas Ashkenazim and Svardim. Lemaisa today, even the Svardim holds that, that you need shisha no matter what. And, we, and that sugi of kfeila is not relied upon. But very good question. There is no question that's a sick, what did he say? A silly question. There's no silly questions. All these questions are very important questions. And most of them have been dealt with by the Shulchan Aruch himself. Weiter. So it can only be nullified. So back to the thing. 
It can only be nullified if the amount is so minute that one cannot detect the taste at all. And we learn in the Gemara in Zvachim, Amar Rava, that how do you determine the status of something? Amar Rabban and Betayma. So the Chachamim say, if you can taste it, the Amar Rabban and Beruba. Then no, you don't need uh, to nullify the taste. As long as it's two against one, that's called rov, it would be okay. And the more goes. Min b'sheno mino. So there's a very important concept. So piece of meat that falls into milk, those are two different items. Or let's say a piece of chazer that falls, a piece of pork that falls into meat. So that's min b'sheno mino. That's a piece that has a different taste because the taste of pork is different than the taste of meat. However, let's say you have a piece of nevela, let's say an animal that was shechted improperly, so it's a rib steak and it fell into other rib steaks. Or let's, let's forget about rib steak, let's say ground beef from a, from a, a non-kosher slaughtered animal and fell in with other ground beef. Well, that's something called min bimino. They have the same, they're the same thing. So there's two, there, so the, the criteria are different. Min, min bimino tastes the same. You can't differentiate between taste if it's the same thing. So min b'shein amino says the gemara is b'taimo. We determine its status if we can taste the non-kosher part. Min b'mino is berubo. But if you have a uh, non-kosher and kosher same item, if you have majority against the non-kosher, it would already be okay. According to this passage in Zvachim, in the case of min b'shein amino, were two distinct foods, for example, basar b'chala, or one which is not kosher mixed together, the mixture is asr, as long as one can taste the forbidden food. But in the case of min bimino, the same species, two foods that are alike, like one piece of meat is kosher, another is similar is not, the prohibited substance is nullified by the majority, two against one. If you have two pieces against one piece, it does not contribute to any distinct taste. Now, we're gonna, pieces like that are not mixed together is called yavesh be yavesh. They're two against one, as long as it's not a, a piece called roy liskabe, as long as it's not an important piece, like ground beef, that's not considered an important piece. So two against one, so if, as long as it's not roy liskabe, you can use this thing of root. But once things are mixed together, certainly liquids that are mixed together. And even in case of ground beef, it's all mixed together, that we won't have the, the, the law of majority. And we're gonna see that as we go along. The Gemara Nebuchadnezzar indicates that all agree with Rava in the case of Min Bishainomino, right? Not the same species that we rely on taste. With regard to Min Bimino, the Gemara brings two opinions, though neither agree with Rava that the majority is followed. Says Masech Bazar, Rabu Shmuel Demar Tavayu, Kol Yisrael Shabatoyra, all prohibited mixtures. Beminon, if it's the same type of food and they're mixed together, one is kosher, one is not. It already prohibits b'mashu, any amount. Shalom beminon, if it's min b'she'en omino, if it's uh, pork with meat, so it's not the same species, then benoys and tam. That's Rabu Shmuel. You rely, if there's taste, it would be prohibited. If there's no taste, it's okay. So this is, neither of these opinions are like Rava that we said before. Rava said, is min bimino beruva, min b'shen amino betaima. So the Ran resolves this contradiction concerning the case of min bimino by saying, that Rava, who allowed Rov, even by Min Bimino, was referring to Daraisa. But the Rabbanon rule is more stringent in accordance with the two opinions of Rezorah that we need a uh, ta. It means one in 60. The Ran himself rules in accordance with the position of Rav Yechnon, that Min Bimino is judged based on the amount of flavor conveyed. Eat. That means even if it's the same species, where Rava said, all you need is a majority, 
he said that you need 60. And that is our halacha. That means even though midor raisa, min bimino, there's, there's nullification, even two against one, midor abonin requires 60. But regarding min bishenu mino, where we say that's the tam ki'ikr, everybody holds that you need 60 midor raisa. So that's an important uh, distinction that, that's made in the world of Isra Beheter. Let's see the Ron himself. Om Rabbanon Beruba. When the Rabbanon said, you need Rav, Uparshin Hasam, Min Bemino Beruba. If you have a kosher piece of meat and another piece of meat, which is meat, but it wasn't shechted properly, so it's Min Bemino, Hanimila Midoraisa. Alva Midorabo. The fact that you could get away with nullification two to one, that's Mikradin Midoraisa. But Midrabonon, Benchnesar Gufo, Benivlal, whether there's actual mixture and all you have is the flavor, Bencha Ainsham, Elapitoso, or whether or not the item was removed. That means perhaps the item is is still there, or maybe it is not there and you just have the taste of it. The din is Vishishi, like Rav Yech. The Ron's logic here is that if there was an actual mixture of basu b'chalav or non-kosher food with kosher food, we determine the permissibility based on the amount of taste, and that is estimated using the ratio of 1 to 60. Less than that ratio is presumed not to have, a, you can taste that flavor. However, the Ron's reason for this ruling is that we must assess the level of mixing that took place. Consequently, the notion of bit applies only where there's actual mixture like ground beef with ground beef, where when you look, if you take some non-kosher ground beef and you mix it with kosher ground beef, you mix it all up, you can't tell the difference, which is, it's like mixing liquid with liquid. But it would seem that there are a few solid pieces. Let's say you have a piece of rib steak, two, three rib steaks that look exactly the same, but one of them was from an animal that was shechted improperly, and two of them are from a kosher piece, kosher animal, some, right? Some would, but they were never actually mixed together, then can follow rov. And if you have two pieces versus one, that would be enough. That's indeed what the Shulchan rules, that when there's a mixture of solid foods that have not actually been merged together, the forbidden food is nullified with rov. Says the Shulchan in Kuv Tes, by the way, Kuftes is the synonym of Taruvis. Katicha, she'en ru'u'i liskabe. So, we need to just take off on a tangent. Ru'u'i liskabe is like a piece of meat that you would serve to a king. So ground beef, I don't know, but a piece of steak, we have to debate whether that's considered ru'u'i liskabe. Why is that? But let's say that pieces of just regular, you know, regular beef. You know, not a really special piece of beef, but a solid piece. But it's not necessarily something that you would cook, cook for President uh, Trump. Why is that important? Because a piece of meat that is royally escabe is a filo be'ela flow bottle. If it mixed one in a thousand, you would not, it's like a din of a barrier. If, if, a, if an intact creature like a rat or a fly, with baria, the din is that thing is also without the possibility of nullification, because a baria is the, is an exception to the rules of nullification. Another exception to the rule of nullification is roy liskabe, is this din. So that's why Shulchan says, if you have a piece that's not roy liskabe, shenis ava ba'acherus. That got mixed up with others, min bimino, right? Beef with beef, not pork with beef, because that would be min bisheno mino. That's a different taste. Yavesh be yavesh, it means it's not liquid, so they haven't mixed together just dry pieces, right? The hainu she'en nivlau. This is actually the shulchanach in, this, in the parentheses. By Yisra Omid ba'atzmo elishnis arab enamakiro. Now, you have the three pieces of rib steak that have been mixed up, and it's like, it's like at the Dodger game where, you, you know, you, you can't tell which one was which. Chad betray bato. Two against one, you have nullification, you can eat all three. Now, there are specifications 
on how you can eat all three. Some, you can't eat all three together at the same time. This, the, I, this Surah and Rabbanon is not going into all the details. There's myriad details. But when you have Yavish, Yavish and, and there's Bittal, you're not allowed to eat all three together. Because again, we know one of those pieces are also. So you can eat two out of three. And some say there's all sorts of different opinions on how you can eat the mixture. But the mixture is in some ways permitted. Says the Ra, says the Ramah, the Demino. We're talking about beef with beef. Avashalobimino Vena Makiro. But but let's say it makes a piece of pork with a piece of beef. But let's say it wasn't. You know, you couldn't identify what, which is which. Then, even if it's dry with dry, even though it's not, you have multiple pieces together. It's not like you mix them all. But you have, you've lined them up all on the table. You cannot eat from the mixture unless you have shishim. If you have shishim, you can eat from the mixture. But without Wait, shishim... If I, have a, if I have a hamburger dish, okay? Coach your hamburger dish. And then I throw in a couple of hot dogs that are trays. All right, a couple of hot dogs are treated. It's not mixed. It's put on the dish. That means I could just remove the hot dog and eat the hamburger or whatever? No. You would need 60 times the flavor of the hot dog before you could eat your, your mixture. That means if a, you, had a, you had a ground beef dish. It wasn't mixed. A, now, remember, a, it wasn't mixed. The dish was no, not mixed. Come, I had a hamburger dish. Someone put this, the same hot dog on the, the That was a different case. I mean, if, if he pulls if, the hot dog off a, and whatever you, flavor is it. If is you have there. ground beef in a pot that's cooking, it's yad so lettuce bowl, and the, and the traif hot dog fell in, right? Even though you removed, so, so you have tom there. The, once you have heat, the bleus of the traif goes into your dish. Now, you have to take the hot dog out absolutely. Now, if you have enough of the meat to nullify against the time of the hot dog, then you'll be okay. able to eat the dish. If you don't, you can't. I you understand, see. Jerry? Right, perfect. Mm -hmm. So with this introduction, we can deal with a common mistake in the kitchen involving a pot, a spoon, Food and fire. This is a <laughs> these are the classic shilas that the Alta Babas would go to the Rav of the Shtot with a question about her pot, about her spoon or about her pot, and this is what uh, this, this is what the uh, all the smicha students are, are are questioned about. What happens if one mistakenly put a dairy spoon? What's a dairy spoon? It's a spoon that was used to cook a milk dish. But remember, it's got to be hot, like hot milk. So with only with heat can you transfer the flavor of dairy into that spoon. Now we'll see there's other methods called kavush. If, you, if it's soaked in, a, in brine for 24 hours, it, it, you, can, you can transfer bleas. But the standard way of a spoon absorbing a blea of dairy is through heat, that's Yad So lettuce bowl. So you got a dairy spoon. And you put the dairy spoon into Jerry Einhorn, what he was saying, the ground beef dish that he's cooking on the pot. So you don't need a hot dog falling in. You just take a dairy spoon and you stick it into the, and you stick it into the mixture. Now, milk flavor versus meat flavor qualifies as min bisha'eno mino. Milk does not taste the same way as meat. So first we have to define, is it min bimino or min bisheno mino? It's min bisheno mino. Everybody agrees? Correct. Uh -huh. What was that? So this is a case of min bisheno mino. So we must evaluate whether there's a ratio of 60 to one of the meat dish and the pot. So now we have to understand something. You might have 30 ounces of meat in the pot. The pot itself has now absorbed the flavor of this meat. So based on the square footage of that pot, there is blios in that pot. So you have to, you have to include that in the same thing. So 
if there's a ratio of 60 to one of the meat dish and the pot to the part of the spoon that it was inserted, as it is assumed that the spoon transfers flavor into the pot. So this either way, the spoon is forbidden since it had previously had dairy absorbed into it, right? So the spoon itself, which had flavor of milk, has now absorbed meat. So there's basar b'cholov in the spoon. So the spoon is certainly out. And now, meat, so this is the ruling of the Shulchan That's the din of the spoon. You stuck a milk spoon into a meat dish. Oh, Ibcha. You could be a, a meat spoon that was stuck into a macaroni and cheese dish. We estimate the amount that was inserted a bit into the pot, right? We have to see, you know, how much was into that spoon. In, so let's say we, we estimate that there was one ounce of flavor there, but, and there's ways of doing that. So if there's 60 in the, in the if there's enough to be the amount in the spoon, the, the food in the pot, in the pot itself, are permitted. The spoon remains prohibited. You can't use that spoon, not with meat, not with dairy. There's a shtick iser in the spoon. It's also with basar b'cholov. So it's not like it's a meat spoon or a, a dairy spoon. It's, it's a treif spoon, treif with basar b'cholov. You can have treifis with uh, something that's not kosher, meat. Let's say pig. You can have something that the animal wasn't shechted properly. That's also not kosher. But basar b'cholov is also an iser. And the, the spoon is a mahut of basar b'cholov and becomes prohibited. It's not that you can... Doesn't, it's not that the spoon becomes buster, it's through the cholchalab, the shulchanach is telling us you can't use it with, can't use it with anything. It's, it's trace. Lefishi blua the buster b'cholab. And buster b'cholab is also. Now, let's say there was only 30 ounces of meat in the pot and the pot itself. The main shishma kol asr bana. So everything, meaning the pot, the food, is also usr. And what is it usr with? It's usr with basr b'cholav. And we know the Torah wrote three times, lo tevashel gedi b'chalei mo. One is for isra achila, one is for isra bishul, and what's the third? Isra ana. So it's usr, and you can't even sell it or give it to your dog. Afilo ha including the dish. Ach mutr la teit letoch peros or tzol name. But to the extent the pot for cold or for fruit, you're not really benefiting from the iser itself, meaning you can't cook with that pot because then you're benefiting from the gufa iser. But using it to store fruit or cold is, is, is permitted by the Shulchan That's just the detail in the Isser of Hana regarding Basar B'cholov, yeah, that Isser is, 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 is the Gufa Isser. But because because of God, this is a technicality, you're allowed to sort of store cold things in there. But that, but that you couldn't cook with it. In this case, we must evaluate whether there's a ratio of 60 to 1 of the meat pot to the dairy spoon to determine whether the pot and food are permitted. However, as the Shulchanach notes, the spoon is forbidden, regardless, since there's now elements of absorbed meat and dairy in it and must be kasher. So, Mirza Shem, in volume five, God willing, we will get there, not too far, we will learn all the dinim of Tvilas Kalim and Hagolas Kalim, two different issues. Tvilas Kalim, when you buy a kli from a non-Jew, you have to be toivela. Second problem, if any of our dishes become not kosher, like through one of these mechanisms, because it's got basar b'cholov in it, or, or it absorbed a treif absorption, you've got to kosher it. How do you kosher it? The basic rule is kibolo kachpolto. 
the way the item absorbed is how you get it out. Kibolo absorbed it. Kachpolto, that's how you get it out. So if something got its absorption through cooking with water, so that's why we use hagola, you, you put the, the prohibited dish in the boiling water to remove the iser. If the iser was put into the vessel through direct fire, like on a grill, so then the way you get it out is libun gomu. You got to get that kli white hot. Some hold that it's very difficult to do that. But anyways, this, these are the mechanisms of what they're saying here. The spoon regard, re, re, requires hagolos kalim to be machshirin. Again, as I do with tvilas kalim, when you buy a new, a new kli from a non-Jew, there's a special din of, tvila, of, of tvilas kalim as I do with hagolos kalim. Ernie, Ernie, question. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just to clarify what you just said, that if, however, something became true, that's the mechanism you use it to to make it kosher. Is, but but you just said you have to get something that 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 you have to do libun. So it seems like you have to go one one step up, or go to an extreme level at that level. No, because like this, Chaim, there. The let's say you let's say you roasted, let's say you let's say you the the the, the iser the the dvar iser came and let's say let's say you cook a piece of pork on a grill, direct fire, and you want to kosher that grill, you can't that grill in hot water because it received its absorption through direct fire. The way to get the iser out is through direct fire, and Lieben Gomer is direct fire. So I think the, the classic question is, you know, you're, you, 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 you had a chicken soup and you, put, you took, took a bowl and the, and the bowl was, was very hot, was very hot. And you actually took a, the melchik spoon, like we just had, and you put it and you, and you use that to, to eat the chicken soup, right? So, now, so that's hot water. So, cook, so when you cook with, like we, I started off, when you cook, when the, when the absorption occurred through cooking with water, so then when you bite, the hagola is with hot water. Well, that way, the gullets. You don't. You don't do a level up. You have just. Have no. Been, no, it's kibolo kachpolto. The way it absorbs is the way you get it out. So, if since you're describing the baser b'chol of going into the milk spoon was put into the chicken soup, how did it get the baser b'chol of blia through the mechanism of cooking with water? Because that's the soup. Right. So that's how you you have to kosher it through hot water. So going back to the case <laughs> of the grill, right? Is when people grill, the grill never is, is never is never red hot, never. I mean, who who, who it makes a grill red hot? So, I mean, to, to take a blowtorch to it would be why a, a grill a grill can become red hot, can become white hot if it if it if it, I mean, if, if it's a high if it's high enough, it, it, it might not necessarily do it. But it's not Lieben Gomer is 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 just age. It's not a it's not a step above. It's since it got it through age. You want to get it as hot as you can to make sure that you get the blee out of there. It's the, it's the extreme level of that level. So with the case of a spoon, for example, right, even though the soup was, let's say, at 100 and let's call it 120 degrees, right, you don't, to kosher the spoon back to, you know, to, to, to make it melchik again, kosher it, you have to actually put it in boiling water, which is 212 degrees. No, but it's not. It's not. It's not. Degrees. It, it, it's not. It's not. It's kabolo kachpolto. That's the... We're gonna learn. There's gonna be, we're gonna learn a whole simon in Agolas Kalim. It, it's it's not a step above. It's the way the mechanism. If it was done through hot water, through heating right. with liquid, then all you need is is not the. Above, but it's the it's the extreme level of that yeah. level. Is what you're saying. Well, well, Chayim. The reason for the the, the svar there is because when you cook, Chazal didn't know you could cook at 180. You could cook at 120. So by, by going to the maximum, you, 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 you've covered all bases. This, this is the highest level. Once it's 212 and it's boiling, you can't get any higher than that. Mm -hmm. So in terms, of the, in terms of the possible ability of the cooking using liquid, it can't go higher than 212. So you could go to 212, the same thing with Lieben Gomer. But you're using the Kabolo Kachpolto principle. You're not, you're not going one level above. You're... Oh. you're, 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 you're if it's cooked with liquid, you use liquid, boiling water. And if you use H, you use H.
Okay. Our previous scenario, scenario dealt with a dairy utensil inserted into a meat utensil with a meat dish. What is the halacha where one cooks dairy food in a meat utensil? So you have a, you have a, a fleshic pot and you cook macaroni and cheese in the fleshic pot. There too, one must similarly assess whether the amount of food was bottled the shishim to the volume of the pot, which is absor absorbed taste from it. This is the ruling the Gmorn Chulin says Masech the Chulin Kedera Shabishal Babasar Lo Yivachal Bachal A dish, a pot that had meat cooked in it, you may not cook milk in it. But the imbishel, let's say you did, the din is benos and tam. If the flavor of the meat can be sensed in the, in the dairy food that you cook there, then it's all served. And we're going to see. You're going to have to have, you're going to have to have uh, more than shishim. Uh, and it's very unlikely that you're going to have amount of dairy food that will be able to bevatel the meat flavor that's absorbed in the walls of that pot. I it's thought it's food. automatic. Every pot absorbs. Everything absorbs. No, but Sydney, we're going to see in a minute that there are certain. There are certain. If you get a if you get a dish that's very wide and very thin, you might be able to have a situation where you put so much food in there that it'll be able to mavatel the blia of meat that's in that wall of that dish. But 99% of the time, we will not be able to the you won't put, be able to put enough macaroni and cheese in the pot to mavatel the amount of meat flavor that's, in, that's been absorbed in the, in the wall of the pot. That's what we're dealing with. And therefore, it's going to asser. We're going to have a prohibition here. You, you, you're usually not going to be able to mavatel the blias in the wall of the pot unless it's a, it's a very special kind of pot. Even if you don't yeah. taste it, you don't, you don't have to taste of the blia, do you? Yeah, it has to give off a flavor. We are, we are misha air. If, if somehow you could be mavatel shishim, that's the rabbinic definition that you don't taste something. But if, for example, there's no way that a, the, the, the meat blia in a pot, that you're going to be able to put enough macaroni and cheese there to be shishim over that. Because you have to calculate it by volumetric. You take the pot, you dip it into a, into a water, how much it displaces. So there's a lot of ounces of meat flavor, even though there's no meat there. There's the tom there. Remember, tom ki ikra. Hmm. So you had a meat pot. You cooked uh, uh, ground beef in there. All the bleus of that ground beef is in the walls of the pot. You have to calculate how much meat bleus is in the walls of the pot. If you put a dairy dish in that meat pot, you'll only be able to eat the dairy dish that you put into that pot, if somehow you had more than 60 times macaroni and cheese on top of the meat bleus, and you'll never have that for most of our kalim, except the way I described, if you had a very thin, very wide mm. clea, we'll talk about it, sometimes you can do, but in general, 99% we don't rely on that, mm. and therefore, it's gonna be us, sir. Sydney, you understand the concept? Yes, 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 I do. Yeah. Ernie, Ernie? Yes, Robert. Does yes. this apply also in the case of noten tam lepgam? Hang on, David. David, that's a, <laughs> we, let's wait one more page. This, let's wait one more page. We are not, we don't need noise and tam. Right now, right now, we haven't mentioned noise and tam lepgam. And it's going to be very important. But right now, everything we've learned, we haven't invoked noise and tam lepgam. But we will. What David is asking is something that we're going to deal with. Let's wait till the next page. So Shulchan Aruch says, "Kedera shebishul bar baser, lo yivashul bar chala, vim bishul bar betoch meis leis, also benoys and tam." So we have to bring up noisim tam lifkam. Meis leis means twenty-four hours. So a ben yomo pot versus an eno ben yomo pot. Ben yomo means. It's a pot that within the last 24 hours, either milk has been cooked in it or meat. If it's a, if it's a meat Ben Yomo pot, that we, we now have 
a definition that means if someone ever asks you, what's a meat ben yomo pot? This meat has had meat cooked in it in the last 24 hours. What's a dairy ben yomo pot? Meat that has, uh, that's had milk cooked in it within the 24 hours. So why did the Shulchan Aruch say that it's a problem only if you cook within a 24 hour period? That's because of what David asked of a concept called Nois and Tom, live God. That is, we, Chazal have taught us that if you have a pot that's now 25 hours, it's, I only cooked meat 25 hours ago. This pot now is an Eino Ben Yomo meat pot. And the flavor given over in the Blia that's, a, that's in that wall of the pot is Livga. Livga means it either doesn't have taste or it gives a bad flavor into the food that you're going to cook in there. So we only answer if you cook in a ben yomo pot. If it's an eno ben yomo pot, then it's no sin, it's no sin time to come. It's, it's as if the blia is not there. Remember, it's as if the blia is not there. And we'll, so that's why the Shulchan Aruch says, if you had a meat pot and you cook macaroni and cheese me'es le'es within 24 hours, then we have to take into account the meat blios because they're live. Let's call them live and not live. Within 24 hours, these blios are live. After 24 hours, they go to sleep. And we don't have to worry about them as much. We don't forget about them, but we don't worry about them as much. Well, they don't so, answer. So what happens then? Is it, so in this hang on. Hang on. Hang okay. on. Let's take it step by step. So the map if we don't have enough macaroni and cheese in the food to overcome the blios in the pot, the, the dish will be usher. So like he says, in general, there's rarely ever bitl bashishim in these cases of cooking in the wrong type of pot or inserting the wrong type of spoon into the pot as the ratio of the surface of the pot to the food or utensil is usually much greater than one to 60. And there would be no be bottle. This is noted by the base Yosef who suggest that Bittu Bashishim would only be relevant in a few cases, like I said. That if you have macaroni and cheese in a meat pot, you don't have enough food to overcome the amount of blias in the, in the kli, the amount of meat blias in the kli. Or inami mishkachashla, he'll say sometimes, a very wide kli, for example, it could hold water again, versus the whole dish. Sixty times surface area. It's very thin and very wide. So, as I said, the vast majority of our kalim, if you use the wrong kind of food in the wrong pot, uh, it, the, the 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 food is going to be rendered us. Okay, so, Ernie, to clarify, as long as it's ace la ace, as long as within twenty four hours. Yes. If it's beyond 24 hours, then no. Uh, uh, no. Let's wait. Okay. Let's take. Let's build this building block carefully. Let's understand right now. But the, the real, the primary din, which is only within the first 24 hours. Now, if it, we're going to have a lot of leniencies when the kli is beyond 24 hours, but right now let's learn the real din when it is 24 hours. When it's 24 hours, if you cook the wrong food in the kli, it's going to be awesome. Another, we said the spoon is going to be awesome. And we said the, the dish and the pot, if you don't have shishim. If you have shishim, but again, in this, in the case of the spoon going into the, the food, you might have enough food against the spoon. So that we said you could save the pot and save the, the food. The, the, the spoon will definitely be trace. If you don't have enough food, then everything is usher. The pot, the food, and the spoon. In this case, the same thing. If you don't have shishim, everything is usher. Because it's got an, a, a, a blia now of basr b'chol of or of trefus. So the food is usher and the pot is usher. Another common mishap that may occur in the kitchen is where mis, a person mistakenly covers one pot, dairy, with the lid of another pot, meat. What is the status of the pot, the lid, and the food? The Ramad is a Sadi Gimel. You take a hot pot, cover it, and you put it on the, on the top of a, of a macaroni and cheese. 
If everything's hot, shneim asurim. Im yesh michael pigdei rishol basu v'cholam. Right? It, it, meat or milk, because it's, there's going to be transfer. Vim akisu tsoinen. Even if the top, the lid was cold, pakdei rishama, nami shneim asurim. Im hitchil azayat achazakisu detata gavar. If there's steam rising, we always go by what's below, because tatogavar, the, the stronger, the bottom is stronger. So the bottom will, will mix with, the, with whatever the opposite is in the thing, and will answer the, the lid and the, and the dish. The prima godim adds that even if the lid has not yet become hot enough to be yatsa lettuce bone, if it has begun to steam, it is forbidden nevertheless. Uvrosech and mizia ben yatsa lettuce bone, also the lid is also. Now let's go to page 122. Noisen and the Eino Ben Yomod Chaim's question and David, uh, David's question. We have seen so far that flavor from a food or utensil that comes in contact with another utensil or food can be transferred from one to the other. But there's an exception to this rule known as Noisen Tam that an impotent flavor or one that detracts from the taste of the other food rather than enhancing it, does not get transferred. One important application of this rule is a case where the meat or dairy utensil was not used for the previous 24 hours. The Gemara in Avodazar assumes that after 24 hours, any taste that remains in the pot is considered livgam, impotent, based on the principle of noisantam livgam. Therefore, if one cooks macaroni and cheese, in a meat pot that was not used for 24 hours. So it's an Eno Ben Yomo pot, right? You, 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 you cooked meat in this pot a week ago. And mistakenly, you took this meat pot, you cooked macaroni and cheese in it. The dairy food in the pot is permitted. The food is permitted. If you can eat it, Why? Because yeah, the, the time of the meat is Livga. It's as if it's not there. So there's no answer there. Nevertheless, since the pot has mistakenly absorbed the taste of both meat and dairy, there is meat flavor there. It's noise and tom live gone, but it's, there's dates there. It must be kosher before being used again. We'll see. We have to kosher it as a gzeira. And that's the ruling given by the Shulchan Aruch. Kedera shabashal babasal. Lo yivashal bachal. It's exactly what we quoted five minutes ago. Says the Ramah, He reminds us that we have to, when we calculate 60 versus 1, we've got to calculate the whole Kedera. So Ramah is, is cueing us in on the problem that we're never going to have enough food to be mavato the shishim blios that are in the meat pot. Avalim shameis leis, but it cooked the macaroni and cheese within 24 hours. You waited beyond 24 hours, according to Shabishul Ba. Havalei noy some time we've got. Umutra tavshil, the the food is permitted. Aval kadeira also levashul ba, lo baser v'lo chal. You may not cook meat in it. You may not cook dairy in it which seems to suggest that even without koshering it, you could use it for something part. The reason the Chazal instituted a decree, Maker at the end, it doesn't even need, it doesn't need <coughs> Hagal. It doesn't need kosh, koshering. But the Chazal instituted a decree using a non-Ben Yomo pot, even though it didn't render the food inside forbidden. It's explained the Gemara about Zara as being that they were concerned, people get confused between utensils that were Eno Ben Yom and Ben Yomo. And they mistakenly use Ben Yomo pots as well with foods of the other type. So, I'm going to stop here. Uh, we were introduced to Nois and Tom with Gam. So you're going to see, technically, if you cook something in the wrong pot, the food you can eat. The pot, you'll have to kosher. Now, what else you can do with that pot, we'll learn next week. And the other various uh, status of, of, you know, of this whole subject.
Does anybody have any questions or comments? How are you so, Matt, Svika doing? Svika is doing much better. Um, uh, uh, and the guy, unfortunately, when he was tearing the talent pot, fell into it. What is the challenge? Is the challenge tray for no? What? What? Why are you worried about the challenge instead of the third degree burn? It's no, Mexican. I'm just asking my cash. Yeah. It's Mexican. It's <laughs> 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 clear. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be Camino. It was a time at my screen.